When he was deputy minister of health, Pavlov Kovtunyuk tried to reform the Ukrainian health system. And now, three years later, he's documenting its destruction. This was once the cardiology center of Chernihiv. But in March, a Russian air raid reduced it to rubble. That was just one of over 180 attacks on health facilities documented by Kovtonyuk and his NGO. I see the systemic pattern of destruction of healthcare as a part of civilian livelihood because it's not only about healthcare, it's all types of civilian objects are being systemically targeted. A dash cam video recorded the moment when eight Russian bombs hit this residential area. A witness sent us another video. It shows the devastation just minutes after the impact. And the crater right in front of the cardiology center is clear to see. 47 people died in the attack and dozens were injured. One resident told us about how shells were raining down non-stop on Chernihiv back then. Excavator. They needed excavators. The victims all had to be buried in body bags. Witnesses confirm there were no military facilities or positions of any kind near the hospital. That's why Koptonyuk says the attack was a war crime and that Russia must be held accountable. Understood. Hospitals are the places which military should seek to avoid actively. It's not that they would shell and then say, oh, sorry, that was a hospital. No. They should check if a hospital is there. And if it is there, they should do anything possible not to hit there. It's their obligation, according to uh, Geneva Conventions. But to ensure justice is served, they're trying to gather as much evidence as possible. Kovtonyuk and his colleagues have been in the field talking to witnesses and looking for traces of impacts and pieces of ammunition. And they're meticulously documenting the damage. Kovtonyuk says they're following international standards so that courts worldwide can use their evidence. We are not legal people by background, none of us. We are healthcare people, but we got some trainings in those protocols and those um, procedures, and we are using the software to do our best and uh, hoping for at least a part of that evidence will go and will win in, in, in some case. And his NGO has also documented the case of Chernihiv's pediatric hospital. We spoke with Dr. Mikola Lyutkevich, but before we could ask him any questions, he just started talking about what happened and about how they were treating all the people injured in an attack on the residential area and how their hospital itself was hit by a bomb two weeks later. We're trained trauma surgeons, but we've never experienced these kinds of bleeding wounds. Everyone was screaming, adults and children. We put five of them on the floor, but they just kept coming. It was complete chaos. With shells raining down, they had to flee into the basement again and again. They even did surgery there and did their best to protect the children until the hospital itself was hit. The Russian missiles were equipped with cluster munition, largely banned under an international treaty. They impacted the first to the fifth floor. Fortunately, there was an air raid siren before the cluster bomb hit. So we got the kids into the basement. Otherwise, we would have had 237 fatalities. He showed us the pieces of shrapnel he collected on site. It would have taken them hours to remove the dozens of bits of shrapnel from the children's bodies. Now, when you hear this, it's no need to explain why we need justice. Because somebody needs to pay for what was done to, the, to people like, like Mikola or his patients. As we left Chernihiv again, we passed by another fully destroyed hospital. Koptonyuk knows it could take years for legal action to be taken in international courts. But in the meantime, he wants to do anything he can to collect evidence.